Hi, before I start, I need to introduce myself because some of you think you think I'm from China. I'm not from China. Okay? During the speech I said I was from China, I'm not. I'm from Singapore, which used to belong to a part of Malaysia. Uh, we broke away in 1965. I'm sure you don't know where Singapore is, it's a very small country. Many great net Americans will say, which part of China are you from? So I'm not from China, I'm from Singapore. <coughs> we are all educated in English because we were once the a colony of the British. And um, this is my fourth year teaching here. And today's topic, we are supposed to teach uh, case development. Uh, in particular, the first speeches of the opening government and the first speech of the opening opposition. Okay, before that, I'm going to ask you to, uh, to ask, answer some question. Question is, first question is, uh, uh, why do you debate? Why do you debate? Let's say you're an opening government, why do you debate? Yeah. Uh, why do you debate when you're an opening government? Yeah. Uh, you want to you wanna, you wanna prove something. You want to get people to think you're away. That's the wrong answer. I'm looking for the right answer. Set the good debate. Huh? Set the good debate. Set the debate. That's not the wrong answer too. <laughs> I have one answer in my head, you must find out. <laughs> <laughs> Identify a problem. No. You want to prove that your science No. You want to have fun? No. Win the debate? No. That's the worst. Don't win the debate. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> And then you don't know why, you just do it. <laughs> That's that you worse. Oh no. Somebody's gotta do it. So you are in green, this is green. I was told. <coughs> Sit down. <laughs> it's from the former communist country. Yes. What country? Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give the answer, okay? All those answers you say are correct. But if you're OG, if you're OG especially, you want to change the world. Write it down somewhere. You want to change the world. Okay? Uh, what, what change do you want in the world? Huh? What change do you want to see in the world? Yeah, yeah, I know, no, of course. <laughs> you guys are smart, give me smart answer. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's called speed of talk, right? She, she's got it, we won't change. But if you're a good debater, you'll go straight to the heart of the issue. Answer the question. What's that? What's my question? Answer. Attack the status quo. Yeah, no, but I, my question is, what change changes do you want? Decrease in conflict? <laughs> yeah, okay. You want to change. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Have you been to the... There's chairs behind that. Go get chairs. Go get chairs. Now, if you've been to any world, Miss World contest, mm -hmm. the answer is world peace. <laughs> <laughs> we want world peace. Just like that. We want prosperity. Write it down. This is very important. Yeah. We want world peace. We want economic growth. We want prosperity. We want human rights for everybody. These are the things you want as opening government. Not to win the debate, not to make a change, not to attack status quo. You must come up with a vision. Okay? If you say you just want to win the debate, then you're, you're looking at too narrow a scope. You're looking at too fine a detail. Right? Reduce conflict. Of course, those are the stuff. So what I'm saying is if you're opening government, you must have a grand vision. Okay? A grand vision. So the vision will be, must be relevantly applied to, <laughs> to what you're going to debate. <coughs> For example, last night the debate was, you should pay stay-at-home mom, right? How can paying stay-at-home mom lead to world peace, economic growth, human rights? Okay? <coughs> I think that's very important. Many, many debaters, especially the at the junior and intermediate level, don't have the grand idea of what you want to achieve at the end of the debate. So before you, you start the debate, you must have an end goal. 
you must have achieved something you want at the end. So that you know where you're going. And so your opponent knows where you're heading to. Because the job of the opening opposition is to clash with you. If you don't know where your direction is, they cannot clash. Clear? So you need a grand vision. You need a state, a, a Steve will call a TC statement, a, an idea which will stun the, the audience and give them an idea oh, this is something worth doing. That's why we as a government propose this change. You understand? So in other debate, it's called a high moral ground or the how higher goal. Okay, so you should have that when you debate. The first thing you must ask yourself, okay? Now, that's the opening statement I'm going to make. Now, I'm going to give you the how to do it in detail. Everybody take a copy. I hope that's enough. Okay. I printed 30. Just take one. This one, this one, and over there. Over there? Oh, over there. Okay, everybody's got it? <coughs> now, before I start, let me just say that the first two speeches of the debate is the hardest to do. In fact, the op opening government, not just the first speech, <coughs> the entire case of the opening government is something we call the holy grail of. BP debating is it's the hardest thing to set the case of the first uh, government because you're creating something new and it's always easy to be attacked and the tendency of the opening government is to be very vague or uh, slip stop in the policy and not lose the debate because of feasibility, lose the debate because they don't have a higher goal, lose the debate because they don't know enough matter, they lose the data because they don't have nothing to say or they don't, didn't know how to identify the issue in the debate and therefore focus on minor things and not the major issues. So it's the easiest thing to do to lose a debate. So that's why uh, these are the handles that we give you to, to do how, how to do it. Basically the two kind of debate you do when you are doing uh, BP debate. The first is called a change debate where you need to identify a problem. So if you look at it, in the middle, there is a handle, the five things that you need to do. You have to tell people the problem, you have to articulate the problem. What exactly is the problem with the status quo? Right? You have to find out the problem. And then, <coughs> the policy of change <coughs> is the one which is given to you in the motion. So you do what, you, what I call reverse engineering. The motion gives the solution. You must discover the problem. Right? So to discover the problem, you must say, you must ask yourself, how do we get to this situation that is so bad that we need a change? <laughs> get it? So you ask yourself this question. What is wrong that we need to change? And after the change, what is the better final goal? Because all debate, <coughs> All debate from the opening government must be about change for the better, to make the world better, right? To make a difference to the world. So you have to ask <coughs> yourself, how much change would it happen, and why this change is better than not doing anything? Okay. <coughs> Next one is you have to talk about the principle. Why? What are the reasons? I'm going through the list here. You look at this. What are the key reasons why you need to do this change? For example, last night, uh, the second debate about uh, having separate unit for the gay. Are you doing it because you want to separate them to protect them like the blacks because you think they are 
subhuman, then you protect it. Or are you doing because it's the first step to full integration? Now you need to protect them. That's how it's done last time. Then later on, as the they become more visible in the army, they would be integrated in the, into the unit much, much later in 50 years' time. So most people argue that that having separate and uh, unit for the gay is a first step. It's called a first step argument. It's, it's not a cure all. It's not a magical potion which solves all the world's problems, but it's a first step. So if you argue that way, then you're not overreaching, you're not over winning, and not over over uh, achieving. You get my point? So you did the debate, right? Yeah. Did anybody argue first step yesterday? So uh, that, that would be a good argument. Okay? So I should say what are the principles you need to, to put in and what are the practical things you need to uh, consider. And finally, what are the final product that makes the benefit? The benefit. So these five points do not necessarily be covered by the first speaker. Normally the first speaker will cover the articulation of the problem, why the solution that you propose has reasonable chance of working. Why, principally, this change must be made for this moral, social, uh, economic, or cultural bad, uh, reason. And finally, the second speaker normally tends to come up with the benefit, the benefit of the case, the further benefit. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. The first speaker will cover at least three of it, three points. Articulate the problem, why the solution work, and the justification. The second speaker tends <coughs> to come around and attack the opponent, <coughs> and then <coughs> review <coughs> the benefits of, the, that means the impact study. After the policy, what happens? Well, that's very obvious because the opponent will say, after the policy, dire consequences will occur. So it's natural for the second opening government speaker to talk about after the after the effect is positive, after the effect is negative. So there's a uh, natural clash. You get what I mean? So there's one way of uh, containing what uh, Steve called your, the package of your the to the to the judge. You you have this framework of what's the problem, what's our solution, what are the justification that we have. And what are the benefits we're going to give you practically and also in the in longer terms? So that is the format most first speaker will go to speak. Okay? First speaker speech. Is that clear? Now this is almost like a standard procedure you have to do that. Okay? Uh, the other things we do is add bells and whistles, like nice opening line. The world now is corrupted. Gays are being discriminated. We are not doing anything about it. Today, the Ukrainian team will tell you how we will help them. We want separate unit for the gays in the military. So you go on. So those are the opening lines. But basically, the first speaker must follow this format. I just told you. Okay? If you can memorize it and you can think about of, uh, setting a case this way, then you would have been organized you would have at least sought some of the content, slotted some of the content into your first speech. Is that clear? Question so far? You know this? Yes? No? No question. Okay, how about you? No, about the from your face? Just ask me a question. <laughs> uh, hey, what? <clears throat> what I maybe. What was yesterday? What was yesterday in during we oh, yeah, in our question. absence? No, forget it. Same Why? Question. <laughs> Good question. So that's simple, right? The other one. So this is a standard format for a model debate. Sometimes you get debate that call value debate. Uh, value debate don't have a verb in the motion. Have you done any value debate before? Yeah. 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 You know how to do the value debate? Mm -hmm. How to set up a value debate? Somebody tell me how to set up the well, 
you basically do not propose any solution, you just have arguments that justify your side of the motion and you kind of measure those arguments by establishing the criteria, which is actually the basis of the grounds which you ask the judges to decide. And sometimes in these kinds of debates, unlike policy debate, uh, both the, both teams advocate opposition. Actually, both teams have their own value and their own, mm, that's how they measure. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So you will, uh, a yardstick, the judge will have to decide which yardstick is more relevant and then use that yardstick to decide the debate. Everybody know value judgment debate? Yes, no? No. No. Oh, you didn't understand what you said? Now some debate always asks you not to act, but to clarify a value. So, for example, the, the, the East is better than the West. So basically, it's a comparison. This, this house fact, believes the East no, is better than the West. Isn't this fact? Yeah, yeah, fact and value, yeah. yeah. This is a fact, but it's used, it used I value. Okay. So if you talk about East and West, one is better than the other. The, the debate calls for a evaluation of these two concepts, right? So like what you said, what you first do is you, you give the judge a standard of judgment. How do we judge? So, I would say that Mr. Speaker, East refer to China and the rise of the Chinese uh, dragon, and the West refer to the crumbling and negative growth EU. <laughs> so then you compare the two. Okay? So then you, you ask yourself, this debate is about comparing the, these two continents and asking ourselves which continent has done more good for world economic development. So I put a judge uh, a criteria. So I said it's about economic development. And then, obviously, if you're a first government, you would <coughs> argue based on all the things you know about economic development and stick in there and say why your argument meet the criteria that we, you set up. So it's self, normally self-serving. The criteria you put, put forth is serve your own argument. You get my point? So normally what you do is you come up with the argument first and then you make up the criteria. You understand that? Mm -hmm. <coughs> of course, the op opponent will never listen to you and never agree. So you say that that's not the way to compare which uh, these two group of, of uh, countries are better off. So economic development is not the way to measure. Okay, It should be social justice. So obviously you say China has got a bad record of human rights, etc. Et EU has banned death penalty, Cross border, etc., etc. So then the debate will be about <coughs> which criteria <coughs> should the judge accept as the more reasonable way to, to dis decide the debate. Then, based on that that idea, he would look at all the arguments that was put forth to decide the debate. Although sometimes it's not necessary for the opposition to choose. Yeah, the sometimes they accept the criteria and they debate them on their ground. But normally they don't because. If you debate on somebody else's yeah. ground, you, you tend to be in controlled by them. Mm -hmm. So it's not a good idea. Okay? <coughs> Understand value debate? How do you know it's value debate? There's no verb in the motion. But for example, this house rejects the American way of life. Isn't that, that the value debate? Reject? How do you reject it? So that's a book there. Well, reject in terms of it's worse than other things. Yeah, you, <coughs> most, some people will turn that. You can turn it, you can turn, that debate can turn to both, both ways. Actual policy to reject, that means we don't want McDonald's in my country. That's, that's the rejection. Or we don't want Starbucks. Okay? And we, we don't want them to teach us debate at all. Right? So that's rejection. Or you can say, put it into a value debate. Okay. So in that, in that situation, uh, the judge will accept both debate. But normally, very strong verb like ban, you cannot have a value debate. You must have some kind of policy. Ban or would, would, I would do something or should do something. Now, if you say support, this house supports, <coughs> then it can be a value debate. <coughs> this house supports. <coughs> revolution is better than yes. revolution. So if, if there's no active verb and they, they give you a state of being, is, okay, being, then the judge is about judgment. Okay. You don't normally get a lot of this motion. You tend to get action debate. Um, uh, 
motion, motion which calls for a change, and how the change gives you good effect or bad effect. Okay. Okay. Let's look at the back of this principle. <coughs> Essentially, I have just summarized and, and uh, make it more obvious to you what the two interactions will be from the opening government and opening up. So, let's look at the OG first. What is the need, the problem statement that you want to get? Okay? What is broken to the status quo with which things fixing? Now, this is a very big part of the Prime Minister's speech. It's very, very important. Most teams forget that. Oh, so intuitively you know there's a problem with gays in the military. You just can't say there's a problem with gay, now let's solve it. You have to articulate the problem in such detail that people know that there is a problem. Because that's the first task of the Prime Minister. If you neglect to do this thing, then you're, you're more than vague. And, and the, the opponent will just say that's not a problem. That's, that's not even the, the way you have correctly articulated. Okay? This is a key role. And then the solution that was presented to you, like I said just now, do not overreach. The solution given to you may not solve the world's problem, will not, may not give world peace, will not give us all human rights. So be careful that the, the problem you articulate is solvable by the solution that was presented to you in the motion itself. Okay? So be able to limit yourself so that you can argue a case that is practically implementable, that is reasonable to the average person. So most most uh, rooms I go into uh, make it sound as though you know, the, the, your proposal will lead to paradise, your proposal will lead to, to a utopia. It's very, very uh, tempting to do that, but try not to overreach. That's one of the big problems I see in most debate groups. You overreach by saying that our solution will solve all these things and so on and so forth. Okay? Our, our solution is to make sure that everything is fine and then after that, the after effect. It's not that. Okay? Don't be too Obama ick. Change. Now, one him the presidency. Yeah. That's, right now, that's why he's fleshing out all, all his uh, change. Right? Little by little, he's doing it. So in a debate, the, the judge is very, very astute. The judge will know, yes, are you trying to, to uh, do something that is not practical and not reachable and therefore lose the debate, or are you being a doubt? So you must, you, you must almost think like an idealistic, this is very important right now, idealistic bureaucrat. You want to be bureaucratic, but you want to be idealistic. You don't want to be a stale, boring, routinized, Bureaucrat, but you want to be idealistically bureaucratic, right? If not, you, your, what you want to do cannot happen, That's and you lose because based on uh, visibility argument from the opponent. Okay. So okay, so that's about it. Now, what we're going to do now is the do a a show. Some I want to uh, volunteer to make a first speech for. Two minutes just to set up the case. Anybody want to volunteer? Then we can critique the, the opening speech. Okay? Who want to volunteer? You. Yes, you volunteer. Listen to the speech and you, you sort of uh, don't critique him, critique whether he did those things I just said just now, okay? About the solution for solution uh, problem gap, the acceptability reasonableness, okay? I give you a simple motion, okay? This that the United Nations should hire mercenaries for military operation. That's easy. <laughs> that, is you. that the United Nations should hire mercenary, meaning a uh, soldier of fortune, okay, for military operations. Okay? 
Then second speech, you will do. You do, okay? That the production of non-hybrid cars should be stopped. That the production of non-hybrid cars should be stopped. Okay, third one. Latinos should have the right to be taught in Spanish in America. Okay, before he goes on, I'm going to give you my ideal first speech. Your ideal first speech will be one where you have an attractive opening line. The attractive opening line will taper paper relevantly to your theme, your goal, remember? The goal, the big vision you have. So that should come in the first one minute. After that, you will explain the key terms in the debate, obviously, right? You know that part. Key terms, we should ex explain it. And your key ideas we need to talk about. And for, for me, especially if you are in my room and debating, you should ask the key questions for me. What are the issues that you want to talk about? And what are the things that matter in this debate? Meaning that you you are asked, teaching me and how how to think, and then you how teach me about the problem. Tell me the problem that you solve in this situation. For example, the UN, and as you articulate the problem, you tell us what needs to be done. Okay, and you 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 then. Itemize the justification for me. So do it in about three, three minutes. Now, all good setup cannot be more than two, three minutes. Okay? So you leave yourself with at least three minutes to speak, two uh, major arguments, and answer at least one POI. Now, it's a common practice now for Prime Minister not to, get, not to accept two POI, apparently, because they have too much to say. So having one POI from the Prime Minister is acceptable but not the rest. The rest normally should get two, right? <coughs> Is that clear? But I'm not saying that you should stick to this rule that just because you're Prime Minister, you accept one <coughs> you want. But that, that seems to be the norm this day, okay? Are you ready? No. <laughs> I don't care. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's said that. Okay. When you, when you are reading a newspaper, you see 12, 20 people killed in Darfur. Okay, but they will back in that. No. That's the thinking of today. That's because the violence in the world, the wars in the world are so such a common thing here that they don't touch us. Human death doesn't touch us. And it's a problem, ladies and gentlemen. We are always seeing we want world peace, we want world peace, but it's more important for us that what they will beckon them. No, will he get a new car, what his wife has done. So why is this more important for us? It's because we have seen so much violence that we are just numb, that we don't feel anything. This is such a common thing, like go buy bread, 20 Twenty people killed in Israel. You know, they're killed all the time in Israel. Why should I care? It's like normal way of life. What? Why is this happening? And what's the problem here? The problem here because the United Nations, but this type of peacekeeping mission when it does it, just can't work. They are there, and what do they do? Practically nothing. We have we have them in Ethiopia. We have them in Darfur. And what's happening? They're still killing each other. Why is that happening? Because the peacekeeping groups that are there are just not well <coughs> equipped. They don't have enough knowledge to do this. So what 
what should be done about the question. This should be done more efficiently with mercenary units. Yes, they fight war for money. And yes, people hire them to fight war for money. Why do people hire them? Because they are extremely efficient. And they are more efficient in solving problems of conflict than there would be a normal army. They fight for war. They need to put up to their reputation to get another job. And you have normal army. You have seen these examples lots of, lots of times. For example, in nearby Bosnia, when you have that normal army, they just, when they see danger, they back up because I am first to me. Now those guys, they don't back up. They need to fight. They need to provide the fight because this, their life depends on it. Well, they obviously can die, but if they don't fight, if they just back up, they won't have any other job, so they'll die eventually from starvation. Maybe okay, it's not that dramatic. Thank you. <laughs> okay, not, not the most ideal first speech. I'm not, I'm sorry because you have so little time, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the speech again. Mr. Speaker, we all know UN wants to do good. The real question we know is not that they want to do good. We know they are a good center cause. However, they don't have enough reindeers. We want to give them really professional reindeer to solve the problem. The problem the UN in world conflict is this. <coughs> they lack efficiency. And we say efficiency can be solved by the employment of Mercenary. How are we going to do it as the first government? It's very simple. Again, we're going to get all the first world country to pull their money together and we're going to uh, have a tender system simply by getting the US American ones, which you know are the best, the ex, ex the SEAL Navy, the ex Marine, to tender for the jobs. Let's say they will tender for Darfur, they tender for, for Sudan, and we will give them the job. And they will be under the mandate of the U.S. Security Council. This is how we can solve the problem of inefficiency in UN in solving uh, uh, conflict reason. Right. You see, he was aiming for inefficiency. Okay, so he's, he didn't sharpen his uh, his uh, problem till very late, to the third minute. So you have to, you have to imagine that all of us are. Well educated, we know the UN want to do good, right? So you must say, what is the what is the solution aiming for? Right? You got it. It's efficiency. So how do you taper it down quickly and solve and give people a clear idea? So then the debate will be about efficiency, right? Of conflict resolution, either by mercenary that are not loyal to any country or country contributed. A, a soldier contributed by the African, Bangladeshi, Kenyan who are not abusing and uh, doing side business in the Darfur and all those things. Get it? So that would be a quick uh, way of doing the, the speech. Good day to all ladies and gentlemen. The motion before the house today is that production of non-hybrid cars should be stopped. Now, let's take a look at the status quo. We all realize that we have issues with the protection of the environment in the world today, that we have pollution, and that pollution is not something that is happening on the other side of the world, but in fact is a serious threat to the planet and to our, um, <coughs> essentially, survival, actually. So, cars, how do cars fit into this? How do cars fit, fit into this uh, pollution issue? Aside from, the, aside from the industry, aside from factories, cars are one of the major pollutants that are actually polluting our planet. How exactly? For example, emissions of carbon dioxide, which increase, uh, increase the problem of the global o o warming. Also poor air, for example, in urban areas, uh, in major cities like, like Beijing in China, are already so saturated with cars, with car population, that the air there, the quality of the air is becoming unhealthy for those millions of people who are living there. And basically what we're doing with conventional cars is we're slowly poisoning our planet and we're also slowly poisoning ourselves. 
Now, what this house is proposing is that production of non-hybrid cars should be stopped. How exactly are we going to do that? We realize that over the night we can simply switch from the classical from the classical car production to the hybrid car production. But we'll, what we already have hybrid cars in the, uh, in the market, we already have companies that are producing hybrid cars. What we propose, what the government proposes is a certain transition period in which the companies, the, mo the motor industry, would have time to actually adapt and change to a certain point their production line so they would be able to produce hybrid cars and we believe that this would not really have a severe impact on the motor industry. Now what happens when we actually do this? What happens when we switch from classical and hybrid cars? <coughs> we have benefits for the nature, which is one of the arguments of the government, and it is also friendly for the consumers. Now the obvious benefits are that we will have less pollution. We will stop poisoning both the planet by reducing global warming, by reducing carbon dioxide emissions <coughs> into the atmosphere, but we will also be helping the health of the people, and we will especially uh, improve the health conditions in major urban areas, for example, major cities with large number of populations. But we will also be friendly for consumers because we all know that uh, gasoline is a big issue and the prices of gasoline on the market are uh, increasing and what will what the, this plan will do is will it will decrease the need for gasoline, it will decrease the need for oil and it will also make car a more affordable and cheaper for the end of the line okay. consumers. Thank okay. you. knows a lot, right? A lot of content. Uh, and of what what is not uh, not very good coming? Do you have the attractive opening line? No, you just read the motion. So so uh, today the motion before the house is he read it for you. That's not something that the, uh, when you're in a good room you should do. You should try to like say taper to the thing. So it's what is he trying to solve? What is he trying to solve? Pollution. Is it air, air quality, pollution, or is it global warming? What, which one? Which respect? Do you get a clear sense of what he's trying to solve? I guess everything. Huh? Everything. Yeah, so you want to solve everything, right? So I, I thought that was asking too much, right? So that, that's what I mean by asking for, you're asking for the sky, or trying to solve the world's problem. So I, he tried to go straight to the articulation of form too quickly, I thought. He should, should give us a slower uh, way of getting into the problem. Okay? Maybe talk about, like I said, the, the graphic illustration of how bad it is in Beijing, how bad it is in some uh, countries. Okay? But he did have a policy about uh, no, slow transition into um, car production, which are not a classic fact. That's good. Uh, I thought the speed or the speech was a bit too fast. Speaks a bit slower. And uh, give yourself time. You, you, you sound like you're rushing through to the speech. Slow down. Okay, so again, let me say, you must have an opening line. The opening line must taper slowly into your team. What do you want to achieve? Okay? And after that, then you go on to your definition of terms and uh, key ideas, then you go into the, to what you want to propose to do. Okay? I, I don't want the argument, I just want this, this part, this, the first uh, two minutes of the speech. Is that clear? Okay, you. Oh. Now we're going to do the first OG speech, then we're going to get first OG and then respond. Two minutes, that's all. Okay? That's fine. And uh, that's what I'm going to do from now till about 11. That's why I'm very happy to see you have three trainers to sort of critique all your speeches. Go. Buenos dias, senores and senoritas. The motion before the House is that Latinos should uh, have the right to be taught in Spanish in America. So the status quo is deeply flawed in America right now as we see it because when an immigrant comes from a Latina country to America, in school they're taught biology, history, math, and English, and then they're given another 
class called ESL, English as a Second Language. So this thinking is deeply flawed. So we put them in a class where we know they don't speak English, so we can teach them English, and then we put them in a biology class teaching them biology in English. They don't know the language, that's why we put them in that class in the first place. So if he doesn't know the language, how is he going to learn about evolution? So what we propose is that they be taught those classes in Spanish and then taught English separately. So this will do a couple of things. First, it will educate them better because they'll know about evolution, so they'll know about math, they'll know about the history of the United States. And English is just a form of communication. Is that it's a channel through which we can communicate with other people. So this will better integrate them in society when they know the history of America, when they know other things. So they'll have a better education, which will lead to better jobs. And eventually, and English should be taught as a class to them, and the other classes in their own languages, so they'll be better educated in English, they can just communicate better that way. Secondly, they will keep up with their peers. Right now, they're in a biology class. They're being taught in English, but they, it's harder for them because they have a dictionary with them, so they have to translate the whole thing every time. So their peers, American students who know English, they do much better. They have an unfair advantage over them because the class is being taught in English, so they do much better than their uh, American peers. So these are two things. First of all, they will be better educated if they're taught in their own language. And secondly, they'll keep up with their Years, and it won't, they won't have an uh, disadvantage uh, in that, that they won't know what the teacher is saying. So if we go with our plan, we can, we can solve this deeply flawed system that we have right now. And uh, with this system, we can have better education for these uh, Spanish people, and they'll have a better opportunity to uh, integrate in this melting pot that is the United States. Right, thank you. Amen. He, he, yeah, yes. he used a lot of big pictures, not at the beginning, but at the end. He had the melting pot at uh, the very last end of his speech, which would be a bit better maybe to use in the first place. Yeah. Anyone? Yes. I think the main value of, of integration of immigrants was kind of undeveloped. Yes. He didn't really talk about it too yeah, much, yeah. but it was the key of his case. Yes. Anymore? Regarding the most proposal, I would kind of define it more. Especially yes, yes, determine whether uh, with, with which level of education they are supposed to receive education in uh, Spanish. I mean, whether it's going to be like uh, primary school or up until university. That yeah. Okay. Any more? Important question. Maybe I like the I like the picture though, then the the, the funniness of the, the ESL class they have, and then the kind of contradiction they have in that system itself. I think that was a very yeah. Any more? Maybe defining uh, how many people. I mean, if you have once one Latin in, in the entire school, are you still gonna have yeah. a class? So, yeah. I would like maybe the duration of it. Maybe it's more like the process into integration, like from Spanish to English. So maybe like is it an intense program to learn English, or is it just like a side class that we learn Spanish? Yeah. My my feeling is that he went too fast into the argumentation. The uh, uh, he did exactly what I told him to do to repeat the motion. Okay, uh, I, even in my room, don't do that. Okay, I hate that. Okay. I, I think it's a waste of, of breath to repeat the motion. Okay. Was it the motion before the house? Like I said, have something to do talk about. How are we going to solve the problem of Spanish immigrants in from Mexico integrating? and assimilating in the bigger Anglo-Saxon fabric of America. So I see it highlight the two key things you want to talk about first. So you can start the, the debate by asking that question, which is that they will, they will give you the, the two hinges of the debate, integration and assimilation, right? And then you go on to your definitions and so on. I thought it was underdeveloped in terms of the policy you say you're going to make them teach, you're going to teach them in, uh, in Spanish. That's it. Right. So I agree with you. The opponent will have a, a good time picking at all your small problems. Who is going to do it? When are you going to do it? Are you going to do it from nursery all the way to university? And so on. If, if so, they will never integrate because the largest society in America is, is English. What about the problem of uh, national pride and, and, and history of America and so on and so forth? So, uh, you went straight too quickly into the argumentation. Uh, 
uh, and you ended about 2 minutes and 48 seconds, don't go too quickly to the I mean, Set up the policy. Like I said, the policy is too uh, broad. You must have limitation. Limitation, meaning that you're going to teach them at this level only. So according to education theory, we should we should give the the kids a good foundation of their own native tongue for the first six years. Let's say primary school, elementary school, and then from that on, they transition into uh, learning American English. Why? Because they have to integrate in the larger society. So then, what's the, the the reason for that? Because cultural practices and so on. Okay. And, multiculturalism and so on. So those are the things you do. Li have some limits and have some uh, key bullet point for your policy. Not just say they'll be taught in Spanish. Uh, which level, who will do it, and uh, at which point are you going to cut off, or and uh, are you going to do it as a pilot project first in the, uh, or are you going to do it throughout America straight away? So uh, think of those Remember, you must think an idealistic bureaucrat. Things change don't come immediately, right? So uh, the the case that the the OO will give you is yeah, we agree with all those things. It's fantastic, but we don't agree with the implementation, and you tear you down in terms of your feasibility. Then you lose the debate, right? Okay, uh, I'm gonna give you a, a break, come assignment, so you can have go co have coffee. And then have a break, but you prepare uh, the, this motion, okay? I'm gonna break you up into three groups because we have three co trainers. Okay, can you count one, two, three? One, two, three, no, three, three, one, two, <coughs> two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Okay, one is my group, okay? One, you stay here, okay? Cool room, okay? <laughs> <laughs> two, two, you go with uh, Nico, just outside the big table, okay? <laughs> and three, you go with Steve, wherever he wants to. Down okay. the street, huh? but the bus stop. The bus <laughs> stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's okay, okay. We go to the gas station, get some beers. We might go upstairs to the television room if it's open. The cold room? No, up, no. At, up at the top, the, uh, room. the room ah. six. Room, if room it's room open, room. I think it, it is. is so. floor, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. I'll, I'll check and then I'll let you know. So we'll meet out here and then we'll. Wait, how many ones place. are there? Raise hand. One. Okay, I'm gonna give you uh, four motions. Four motions, okay? Is it just for one or for all of you? Uh, sorry, uh, there are eight, right? So, uh, F, all the room will do the same ones, okay? Uh, one person will do the OG, one person will do the OO, okay? And all the speeches are just three minutes. So prepare, prepare all four. All four, all four, all sides. All four, up and prop. Uh, <laughs> all the same time. Yeah, five minutes. In five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm from Singapore. We're demanding. <laughs> okay. First one. This one, you. Very good to debate in the morning. <laughs> that capital punishment should be allowed in cases of child rape. They're all similar, so don't worry. That's why I make it prepare for. I repeat that capital punishment should be allowed in cases of child rape. That means not the child who's raped must go, must die, but the steel <laughs> must die. <laughs> Second one, that we would abolish the crime of statutory rape. S-T-A-T-U-T-O-R-Y. Statutory rape. Statutory rape. S T A T U T O R Y. Rape. R A P E. Which is what? Which, which would abolish? Would abolish the crime of statutory rape. Okay, in most countries, let's say me, I'm an old man. He's, she's 12 years old. She loves me. She wants to have sex with me. That's a she? Thank you. She. And she wants me, and I want her. 
and one fine night, we did it. Yeah. Uh, even though she agreed, it's called rape in the eyes of the law. So in most countries, if you have sex, whether or not the lady or the, the young boy wants, wants it or not, under 16, it's called rape. Uh, have you had this law here? Yeah. Uh, America yeah. have yeah. So, so the debate, the, the debate call for you not to have this law anymore. Next one, last, third one, okay? This one. That, third one, huh? That police officers should be banned from posing as children on the internet to catch pedophile. Pedophile, P A E D O P H I L E S. This is a very American uh, motion because that's what they're doing in America. From posting as children? Posing. Okay. On the internet. Posing is pretending as children on the internet to catch pedophile. Pedophile are people who like to have sex with young kids. That's the. Okay. Only weirdo motions. All yeah. sex and children. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You want to tell us something? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, weird and funny is because they're related. It's a, it's a thematic in in my in our part of the world. Uh, in debate, there's one once one uh, format called Australasian. You don't get one topic; you get three, and you you get a thematic one. So this is called. So I'm giving you this, this three that are related. So what happened is, it's a three on three debate. The two teams must rank the, the, the motion and decide which one they have to debate. They have to discuss. Oh, interesting. So this is a different way of doing it. Okay? So it's not that I'm a dirty old man. <laughs> <laughs> which could be true too. <laughs> but the last one, even worse. Okay? That hymen reconstruction surgeries should be banned. Hmm. I didn't even know that was possible. Oh, sex change is it? No, no. no. I have reconstruction. So is it when you lose your virginity, they sew you up. Ah, so you're okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Hymen, H-Y-M-E-N, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> H -Y -M -E -N, reconstruction surgeries should be banned. Now it happens a lot in America because middle-aged uh, wife want to please the husband sexually, but it also happens in country where um, virginity is valued highly, especially in Middle East. So women want to go for the surgery in order to be able to get married. If not, they will never get husband. Okay, the plan is this. Now it's 10 or 3. We have 10 minutes. Hopefully we can uh, prepare the motion, have a drink, and then go to your places. Your, your <coughs> will make you do a speech. <laughs> <laughs>